Hey everyone, it's time for more Tricky Parts of Calculus, the series where I only cover the most difficult parts of calculus that nobody talks about. But today, I'm doing something that everyone needs to know about. I'm going to do the best and most complete, with no gaps, proof of the area formula of a circle. So the area of a circle of radius r is pi r squared. Pi, remember, is defined to be the common ratio of any circle circumference to its diameter. And so the area formula can also be stated a equals 1 half cr. This is one of those facts that everyone knows. Uh, I think I was probably told this fact in first grade, but very few people know how to prove. And unfortunately, the most popular proofs that people do know contain some big gaps. So to be clear about what it means to prove it, I, I have to say where we're starting from in terms of what theorems we know, like whether we know the fundamental theorem of calculus, I'm not interested in giving the most modern, slickest proof. I'm interested in how we could establish the area of a circle if we had to do it for the first time. So I want to give uh, some history. You have to realize this is a hard problem. People thought about how to measure the area and circumference of a circle for at least 2,000 years before the problem was solved. Uh, we have this great papyrus from year 33 of the reign of some pharaoh. There seems to be some confusion over which one, so maybe it's from 1550 BC or 1650 BC. Uh, it says it's a copy from an older papyrus, could be from the 1800s BC. The point is they had to calculate areas of circles to know the size of fields or the volume of grains stored in a cylinder, and they approximated the area as 256 over 81 r squared, which we would say estimates pi to be about 3.16. A thousand years later, uh, we have Pythagoras. He founded the mathematical philosophical school slash cult in Greece. Uh, Plato then founded his own academy in the same style and posed to students this famous problem of squaring the circle or constructing a square with the same area, which is actually harder. But you can see he was interested in the area of a circle. The mathematician Eudoxus gave the first rigorous argument that the area is proportional to r squared, so it's r squared times some constant, but he gave no such relation about the circumference or said anything about how the area is related to the circumference. Uh, I'll come back to Aristotle in a moment. Uh, Euclid wrote the most famous book of geometry in antiquity, but for circles, all he was able to do was record Eudoxus's work without any further progress. I'll also mention uh, Aristarchus of Samos as uh, a great mathematician slash astronomer who measured the distances to the moon and sun. All of these were very smart people who were very interested in the area and circumference of a circle, and none could show that A equals one half CR, which was finally proved by Archimedes, probably the greatest mathematician in antiquity. Now, I'll say Aristotle found the problem of arc length so vexing, so confounding, that he declared there was simply no way to compare lengths of curved lines to the lengths of straight lines. Well, <laughs> that's the kind of wrong statement uh, only a philosopher can make. In the real world, Aristotle's own pupil Alexander conquered so much territory that long distances between his cities had to be measured accurately with early odometers, so people did have to find approximations for the circumference of a wheel. Uh, this is how they measured the distance between Alexandria and Syene, which was used to calculate the circumference of the Earth, the problem famously solved by Archimedes' contemporary Eratosthenes. I want to make some comment about some popular proofs you might see in school or elsewhere on YouTube. Uh, here's inadequate proof number one. Divide the circle into sectors, like slices of a pizza, then rearrange the slices to alternate facing up or down to make another shape with the same area. Uh, unfortunately, I, I ran out of room here, but you get the idea. Um, as the circle is divided more times and the slices are thinner, the shape they rearrange into looks more and more like a rectangle of height r and width 1 half c, since half the sectors point in either direction and the arcs of all sectors have length c. It's very suggestive, uh, but it's tricky to work out what it actually means for the shape to converge to a rectangle. There's also this popular method I'm going to call inadequate proof number two of the area of a circle. 
I've seen this method on 3Blue1Brown and Eddie Wu and some other places. I have nothing against them, but maybe you'll see why I don't like this method of proof. It involves dividing the circle into lots of thin annuli bounded between concentric circles. The annulus at radius r looks almost like it could be uncurled to look something very close to a rectangle of length the circumference at radius r, which is 2 pi r, and width delta r. Summing the area of all these rectangles in the limit as delta r goes to zero, which is what integration is, should give the area of the whole circle as the area under this line, which is that of a triangle with base capital R and height 2 pi capital R, so the area is pi r squared. This is the standard method in the part of calculus that used to be called analytic geometry. And my worry is that this is again too slick. It seems plausible that if delta r is very small compared to r, the area of the annulus will be close to the appropriate rectangle, but how close? Is it close enough so that the distance, which is non-zero, doesn't matter in the limit? Uh, it would suffice to show that the error is little o of delta r, if you know what that means, but it needs a proof. In, in the modern treatment of calculus, it should be said that this issue is circumvented by defining the area of appropriate shapes to be given by the limit of such sums of areas of rectangles. Of course, if you do this, you're then beholden to prove that this notion of area satisfies the kinds of properties you want area to have, uh, but I'm not going to go that route. I'm going to give a different proof, essentially equivalent to the one Archimedes actually gave. So here's the proof that the area is one half CR. Step one, let's compare the area A with the area A of IN of a regular polygon inscribed on the circle. I'll just draw a hexagon. Its area is smaller than A because it's contained in the circle. And I'll also show that A of IN is less than one half CR. In fact, we can calculate its area by dividing into triangles. This length r prime, that's the height of a triangle, actually has a name. It's called the apothem, if you want to know. There are n triangles, each with height r prime and base, one nth the perimeter p of i n. So a of i n is one half r prime p of i n. Now the apothem r prime is less than r by the Pythagorean theorem. And the perimeter of the inscribed polygon is less than the circumference. This is not obvious. It was also proved by Archimedes, and it was something I discussed in episode two of this series. Check that out for a proof. With those inequalities, we get A of I n is less than one half C R. All right, so similarly, in step two, we compare the areas of circumscribed regular polygon C n to the circle. Their areas are larger than A, and they're also greater than one-half CR. Now the apothem is equal to the radius, and the area of CN is one-half R P of CN. Once again, the perimeter of CN is greater than the circumference of the circle, but that's not easy to prove. So once again, you should definitely check out episode two for a proof. With that, A of CN is greater than one-half CR. So what we have is that the area A of a circle is more than the areas of all inscribed polygons and less than the areas of all circumscribed ones. It remains to show that this actually forces A to be one half CR, that there's no room in between. This would be true if we could get as close to A from above and below by the areas of regular inscribed and circumscribed polygons, but I'll stress we're not done. Along with showing the inequalities between perimeters and circumferences, this is the other hard part of the proof. Note that in the last episode, when I was discussing the modern definition of arc length, this kind of feature is built into the notions of least upper bound and greatest lower bound. But Archimedes had not defined the area of the circle to be the least upper bound of all inscribed areas or the greatest lower bound of circumscribed ones. He only assumed the inequalities between them. He had to show directly that the areas could be made as close as desired in the following way. So first he noted either A is exactly equal to one half CR or A is greater than one half CR or A is less than one half CR exclusively. 
And if they're unequal, say A is greater than one half CR, then it's greater by some positive amount, epsilon. Even if very small, I'll, I'll zoom in. Now, all we have to do is show we can find some inscribed polygon whose area is closer to A than epsilon, because then its area is forced to lie here on the number line. So A of I n is greater than one half CR, but we already showed A of I n is less than one half CR. That's a contradiction. And it'll work the same way with circumscribed polygons if we assume the other inequality. So I'm going to let delta n be the difference between the area of the circle A and A of I n, or the excess area. Archimedes showed that when you take twice the number of sides, delta 2n is less than half of delta n. That way, whatever delta n you start with, by successively taking midpoints and doubling the number of sides a finite number of times, the resulting difference is sure to be less than the value epsilon fixed at the start. That this can be done starting from any values epsilon and delta n is a key fact that also goes by the name the axiom of Archimedes. That's just like the axioms described in episode two about straight lines having the shortest distance and convex enclosed regions having smaller perimeter. Uh, that makes the terminology confusing, which one is the axiom of Archimedes. But this axiom of Archimedes is probably better known. Uh, today, mathematicians describe number systems as Archimedean or non-Archimedean according to whether they have this property. OK, so how do you show that delta of 2n is less than one half delta n. So it's all geometry. You take i n and you add midpoints. I've drawn a hexagon and a dodecagon. And here you see the areas that represent delta 2n in red and delta n being both the red and the yellow. Now zoom in on one of the bisected regions. Why is this excess area less than half of the area of this region, the region in yellow and red, called the segment of the circle. It's from symmetry. Make the rectangle around the segment. These triangles are all congruent. And the right red region is entirely contained in its triangle, so it can be moved to the left side without changing area. But then it's clearly contained in half of the big segment. So doubling the sides cuts the area by more than half, and we're done. The other way, showing that doubling the sides of a circumscribed polygon cuts the excess area rho n by more than half is similar. Here's what it looks like to double the sides. Again, the excess areas are red for rho 2n and yellow and red for rho n. Here's a zoomed in picture of one of the excess regions. By symmetry, it's enough to show that the area of either of the red pieces, say the left one, is less than the area of the yellow triangle EDC above it. Since C2n is regular, the segment AE is equal to the segment ED. Actually, any point like E at the intersection of two tangent lines to the circle is always equidistant from its points of tangency. That's an exercise. The red region that we care about, bounded by AEDH, is contained in the triangle AED, and I claim that the whole triangle AED has smaller area than triangle EDC. We can drop a common altitude to both, DG, and the base EC is longer than the base AE by the Pythagorean theorem. So rho 2n is less than 1 half rho n. Well, that finishes the proof. We found contradictions if the area A were greater than 1 half CR and if A were less than 1 half CR. So A must be 1 half CR. Another way of putting it is that we showed directly that the increasing areas of inscribed regular polygons and decreasing areas of circumscribed regular polygons converge to the same limit. So let me make some comments about this proof. First of all, let's just take a moment to marvel at, at this proof. I hope you can see why I think it's the best proof of the area formula of a circle, and I wish more people knew it. It really belongs in a calculus class because you need the area of a circle for the theory of the trig functions. But look how Archimedes was so careful and left no gaps. His proof had to be unassailable. The Greeks 
uh, were very skeptical of limits, uh, maybe because of Zeno's paradox, and none of that shows up here. There's no uh, no wishy-washiness about limits. His proof is nothing like uh, the theorems of calculus from the early parts of the subject. It's much more like the work of the late 19th century. You know, Archimedes did not have the benefit of the modern machinery of Cauchy sequences or least upper bounds. He provided his own foundation for this theory that does the real work of analysis, which is comparing these uh, trickier unknown curved segments and curved regions to lengths of straight lines and the areas of triangles. And that's why I give Archimedes credit as the world's first analyst, uh, besides being the greatest mathematician of antiquity. Of course, this method of bounding the circle between inscribed and circumscribed polygons is how Archimedes was then able to uh, approximate the value of pi. There is a great recent video of this. I'll link to the description on uh, Veritasium's channel about doing this. I think you can understand the method going from a 6 gone to 12 gone, 24, um, and finding closer and closer approximations to pi with their perimeters. Uh, but the real difficulty if you try to do this yourself is, of course, that those perimeters of regular n-gons involve some square roots and nested square roots. And so the real problem has to do with finding rational approximations to those perimeters, uh, which really becomes more of a problem of number theory and Diophantine approximation, which Archimedes also did. And that would be a great topic uh, for another video. Please let me know. If, uh, if you like these videos, if you have any ideas about what you would like to see covered, if there's some tricky part of calculus that, uh, that's never explored. And thanks so much for watching. See you next time.